Hi there, and welcome to Buzz TV. It's a big day for us here. Our very first inaugural broadcast, our very first live stream. My name is Brian Race, and we are sponsored by Mountain Sweet Honey. We'll be telling you more about Mountain Sweet Honey here in just a few minutes. Whether you are listening in our home state of Georgia, somewhere else in the United States, or around the world, welcome in. Ray Sivitz, he's our host. I'm going to introduce you to Ray in just a moment. But first, let me tell you a little bit about Buzz TV. We are here to help you in your journey to becoming a better beekeeper. No matter where you are in the, the spectrum, where you are in your journey. For example, I'm a novice beekeeper. You're probably going to hear me ask some very uh, basic questions, maybe even some dumb questions at times. Ray, he's the professional. And whether you're anywhere, again, uh, between novice and a professional, we think this show is going to be for you and bring lots of great uh, education to you. One of the ways that we hope to accomplish that is with some interviews that are going to be with seasoned professionals, seasoned beekeepers, some of the top uh, bee researchers uh, across the country, and even product uh, vendors. Another thing that we're excited about is the ability for you to ask your questions. And there really are no dumb questions, but we do want to hear what's on your mind. What are the things that you are uh, working through that you're hoping to get better at? We'll be telling you throughout the broadcast, uh, sharing with you how you'll be able uh, to submit your questions and, and get them answered by the professionals. Now, if you find these episodes are of, of great value, and I, I do hope that you will find them uh, useful, one of the things that we encourage you to do is to, to like the videos, to subscribe to the channels. Currently, you can find Buzz TV on YouTube at the Mountain Sweet Honey page, also uh, on Facebook and at mountainsweethoney.com. So a, a lot of ways there that you can share with people, uh, hopefully what is your new favorite live stream. Now, Ray Sivitz, he's been in the beekeeping business for a long time. And it is my privilege right now to introduce you to our host, my good friend, Ray. How are you? Thank you, Brian. And I want to say thank you, especially for all the engineering and the development that you've done for us here on Buzz TV. I'm having a blast. I know you are spending my money. <laughs> <laughs> if folks, if you only knew. No, seriously, though, the engineering has been uh, a, a big mountain to climb. And we've climbed it. You've climbed climbed mm. most of it, carrying me on your back. And I appreciate all that. You've and he done ain't heavy. Side. He's my brother. <laughs> Actually, he is heavy, but he's still my brother. But a little throwback to a 70s, 60s, 70s song there. Only you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this all started back in, in August with us mm -hmm. having lunch as longtime friends. I guess maybe 30 years we've known each other. I think since a water skiing class in 1994. Now you were so much better and I know you were frustrated watching a scrawny little guy out there trying to water ski, but been friends ever since. And, yes. uh, it's, it was great to uh, connect again, uh, over a lunch that probably was the most expensive lunch you've ever had to pay for. Yes, you are correct. <laughs> but you know, it, it all started so innocently with us just having a friend's lunch together mm -hmm. and then a uh, one hour lunch ended up being a three hour lunch as we were talking about you coming on board and helping us get this off the ground. I've been looking forward to this. Uh, I'm a big uh, consumer of, of live streams and uh, love spending time on YouTube, learning and sharpening uh, my skills. And as a novice beekeeper, I've got a lot of things to learn. And so to get in on the ground floor of Buzz TV, uh, will help me in my new passion and I think will help a lot of people as well. Well, thanks again here, Brian. Let's get to the, to the rest of the show time. You may be asking, what is buzz TV all about? Well, let me take a moment and tell you what we are. We are solely focused on beekeepers and honeybees. That might seem simple, but there's so much to learn when it comes to beekeeping. And of course our honeybees, we want to offer an educational program for the new beekeeper as well as the most seasoned beekeeper. Our goal is to help move you to the next level in this hobby. We also have a real heart for those beekeepers that have no access to training, and that's part of the reason why we started this program. 
Lastly, we want to make it fun. So what can you expect from our show each week? We will offer beekeeping news, flash sales, Buzz TV promotions, cutting edge interviews, and a question and answer time from you, our audience. In the coming months, we'll be offering a, a segment called House Calls. We will come to your home, discuss your issues, inspect your hive, offer suggestions, and we are looking for beekeepers located in Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Alabama. If you would like to participate on this program, write us at buzztv at mountainsweethoney.com. Ray, I wish we had the sound or the noise of a siren or something because it's time for details on the flash sale. Yes, it is, Brian. And yes, you've been eager for this time. Our flash sale today, folks, is for Pirco Medium and Deep Foundation. Have you guys been caught with without any foundation, but you got frames? Well, now's the time to stock up. Today, we're offering 15% off on all Pirco medium and deep foundation. Now, what you'll want to do is you'll want to go to mountainsweethoney.com and you'll see a button called Buzz TV Special. Click on that and it will take you to the product. Now, when you get to the product and just as you're about to check out, go and use the coupon code BUZZTV. Now that's all one word and it is a limited time offer. Um, it's good through this Monday, but for those that are watching the replay on this, it is November the 3rd, 2022. So click on our homepage and hit the button for Buzz TV product specials and it will take you there. Once again, guys, it is the very first live stream episode of Buzz TV, Brian Race, Ray Civets. Just a moment ago, we saw the little graphic pop up that John from Pierco is going to be joining us in a few minutes. Yes, John Carone will be here in just a few minutes, and he'll be telling us a lot about his products and where he's going with his business. So we can't wait to, to hear more from him. Of course, Buzz TV, that coupon code to take advantage of the 15% off flash sale that Ray mentioned to you just a few minutes ago. One of the segments that we want to do is industry buzz here on buzz TV, sort of keep you guys up to date on news uh, and things that are happening within the world of beekeeping that might have impact on you. What you got for us, right? Well, we've been following hurricane Ian. Mm, that was uh, horrible. That came through Florida. Yep. Florida is a big time beekeeper uh, state. And we didn't know what numbers would be affected because it came through a majority of the state of Florida. And uh, we were fortunate enough to talk to Jamie Ellis, Dr. Jamie Ellis from the University of Florida. Earlier Who will be week. a guest in future yes, episodes. He, will be. he sure will be. And, and Dr. Ellis uh, mentioned to me on a, on, on a call that there are an estimate 400,000 hives that reside in Florida. And when you look at that versus the, the national uh, census on hives is 2.6 million. So the state of Florida has 15% of the beehives of all the United States. That's what, about four or 500,000 or so? Some 400,000 400, hives. Yeah. And uh, so if you just use some quick math on this is take 10% of that 400,000, mm -hmm. that means 40,000 hives were lost in Hurricane Ian at a conservative side. And, you know, obviously if it was 30%, then it would be 120,000 hives that were affected. So um, very, very concerned on, on where this will pan out. And uh, we're hoping to get some updates out of the state of Florida on that and on future broadcasts. In here. fact, Ray, I was going to suggest if anybody who's watching right now uh, is in Florida and has been affected or is part of a beekeeping community yes. that has some news, again, our email address is buzztv at mountainsweethoney.com. Again, thank you, Mountain Sweet Honey, for sponsoring the show. Buzztv at mountainsweethoney.com. Let us know your story. We, we can give some publicity to it and, and give some real uh, actionable material from there uh, in Florida. 
And Brian, we're also watching another news story unfold in Western Canada. Okay. Uh, we started getting reports in late April because that's about the time the snow's melting away and beekeepers are getting back into their hives only to find out Varroa has come in uh, very, very hard in the Western part of Canada. And we're talking 70 to 80% bee loss in Western Canada. Mm -hmm. And those numbers are just beyond crazy because the, the Canadian government will not allow imports of honeybees from the United States. So it is putting the beekeepers in Canada in a very, very hard place in that they have to grow their own bees in Canada. And maybe that would happen in the Ontario region, which mm -hmm. is the southernmost part of Canada, where the, the bees could flourish a little bit more before the thaw on the western side of Canada happens. But still, the numbers don't add up for replacement of those bees in the months to come. And I think that this is going to be a real shortage for those beekeepers in, in Western Canada. Do you have any connections of, of people that uh, sell packaged bees up in there? I, of course, Mountain Sweet Honey is one of the, yeah. the largest uh, sellers of packaged bees, especially uh, east of the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And so I know you've probably got contacts industry-wide. Is there anybody that if any of our listeners, viewers uh, there in, in Canada are, have suffered uh, through what you've just described that they may consider reaching out to or what next steps should they take? Well, on our next broadcast, we will have the contacts of folks there in Canada that they can okay. contact. And hopefully, you know, right now we're going into the off season and full off season uh, in, in our bee inventories, not only here in the South, but also in Canada at this point. So the growing cycle really won't happen until April of next year. Okay. And I believe we're going to find that there's already a backlog that is there for the commercial beekeepers to replenish their stock as well as sideliners. On that. And guys, again, if you've got news that uh, you think we need to know about, uh, send it to us via email, buzztv at mountainsweethoney.com and uh, get your story featured on a future segment of Industry Buzz. Now, we're also looking and watching what's happening in Australia. Uh, for our viewers that don't know, they were varroa-free uh, mm -hmm. up until uh, this summer. And that's when the first varroa was found in Australia. They put a quarantine area around a district and said, hey, you can't take bees in or out of this zone, quarantine zone. And uh, then they ended up expanding it because Varroa had already carried to another 10, 15 miles beyond that. And they quarantined that area. And then they started burning hives uh, to try to eradicate Varroa. And that's a tough thing for a beekeeper to see and experience but that's what happened there. Now, they have moved away from the quarantine, but we will not know where they are in Australia in regards to Varroa until probably right after Christmas time on that. So we're keeping an eye on that too, folks. Well, good. Well, Ray, thank you for keeping us up to date on some trends worldwide. And uh, we'll look forward to this segment just growing with more and more information on subsequent uh, live streams. Very good. Before we get into the interview with John Carone, I want to share a story with you. I was in my second year of artisan beekeeping and an unnamed supplier sent me Pureco plastic foundation instead of true wax foundation. It was several cases of foundation and I decided to give it a try. The results were remarkable. The bees drew out the comb far faster than traditional natural wax foundation. I have now been hooked on Pureco Foundation ever since. I would like to introduce John Carone, CEO of Pureco in Riverside, California. John, welcome to Buzz TV. Fantastic. Thank you, Ray. Thanks for having me. John, tell us about what you do. Thanks for asking, Ray. Specifically, what we do 
is we run a manufacturer, uh, manufacturing and distribution center right here in uh, Riverside, California. We do specifically injection molding of our products. We own our own molds. Um, we convert pellets into a plastic part that is uh, specifically designed for the bees. And we have all wax operations, warehouse and distribution. Uh, we've got our, our uh, main office, uh, sales force, as well as our retail outlet, all in one building under one roof. And uh, proudly enough, uh, we could say the Pirco product is made in the USA. And uh, we're, we're grateful to say that. That sounds great, John. John, tell us a little bit about the Pirco Snap-In Foundation. The Snap-In Foundation. Oh, that's a wonderful picture of, and we're proud of that. The Snap-In Foundation is a, a product that uh, uh, we put into a wood frame or the beekeeper puts into a wood frame. It's, uh, it's changed the whole atmosphere of the um, history of the beekeeping when it used to be wires and wax foundation. And through the years, we got involved with the foundation. We um, designed it specifically cell, uh, cell by cell from a beehive or a bee comb and emulated that. Uh, due to our manufacturing process, it has an extremely sharp cell, perfect dimensions. It doesn't change. And then we put different types of coating of wax on it, which we can talk about in a moment. Um, it's changed the whole environment uh, for um, backyard beekeepers all the way through commercial beekeepers. It sure has. John, you have three different wax applications available in single wax, double wax, and triple wax. Without giving up any trade secrets, tell us how you accomplish this in the manufacturing process. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, the, the three applications have actually been around for years. It's just changed drastically in the last couple of years, meaning that most people did not want to um, pay for, let's call it, the extra wax. And we, we had a uh, most of our customer base throughout the years was um, commercial based. And when those guys are buying thousands and thousands of sheets, every penny counts. And what has come about in the past few years is extra wax, you know, and what we call it is single, double and triple. And we mean that where our competitors, uh, there's a lot of them that call it extra wax or max wax or or different terms of that nature. The bottom line is the the more wax you put on a plastic component, the more comfortable the bees are going to be to working that hive. They're going to smell it. They're going to feel it. And they're going to build their comb foundation quicker on a foreign sub, uh, substance like plastic. And um, for the hobbyist, we would strongly recommend double or triple wax because you have you're, you're trying to draw bees to your hive. Um, and you need that to get the first comb set. And uh, yes. with the commercial guys, we've seen a change there as well with um, them getting more intelligent, smarter and understanding where the bees are spending their energy. Would you rather have them spending their energy on forging, producing honey, um, um, cleaning the hive? Or would you rather have them uh, spending their energy on building the comb? So a heavy foundation mm -hmm. is uh, uh, changed the environment the last few years. And uh, um, uh, we've seen a, a drastic shift there. Great point. John, I've seen our bees draw out the comb much quicker in double and triple wax coats. Can you inform us on what is going on with the bees and drawing out the, quick, the comb so quickly? Well, once again, kind of reiterating what I just kind of went through, Ray, is they have a good base to start from, you know, so the base is everything. They're comfortable with the wax. Uh, they, they smell. We use a, a, um, a domestic clean capping wax that has a lot to do with it. Um, so the cell design of the part itself which is specific designed, um, uh, it's, it's the, the exact dimensions, as well as the heavy coating, the good smell and the capping wax, the bees are attracted to it. They work it out well. And boy, do we get a lot of compliments from our customers. I've been very impressed myself. John, can you share with us where you and your company are headed in the coming new year? Absolutely, Ray. So Pirco continues to grow and launch a variety of new products. We're heading into the uh, trade so, trade show season, so uh, we are vamping up for a variety of shows, which we involve uh, get involved with and collaborate with uh, a, a lot of groups. 
One of them is uh, CSBA up in uh, Reno this year, uh, uh, California State Beekeepers Association. Uh, we also do some things up in uh, Canada. Uh, so we'll be doing an Alberto show up there. Um, and we also produce more and heavily in America with uh, the Honey Producers, which is a show in Tucson and ABF, mm -hmm. which is out in Jacksonville. One of the biggest new things that's on the horizon is, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of him, but he's doing a fabulous job. A, a guy named Cayman Reynolds, and he's involved in uh, um, this thing called Hive Life. And he's doing a show out in uh, um, January, and I think it's good for the industry. It's uh, um, YouTube uh, influencers, and uh, it shows and gets people involved like you and I, Ray, and uh, brings education and uh, um, a lot of people together for uh, the developing of the bee industry. And I, I think that's a, a big help uh, as, as we're doing here with, uh, with your channel. Very good. Our Buzz TV special for the next five days, we are going to offer medium and deep foundation at 15% off. Please use coupon code BUZZTV. When you enter the coupon code, please be sure to type it in as one word to receive your 15% off. This special is exclusive to our Buzz TV audience. Go to our website at mountainsweethoney.com and scroll down halfway where you see Buzz TV and click the link there. I want to thank John Carone for being on our show today. Folks, don't forget, Quality Foundation begins with Pureco, the name you can trust. John, thank you for joining us and talking about your company and your products. Ray, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Take care, my friend. Let's talk about honeybees. Did you know that 90% of beekeepers have Italian honeybees? By far the most popular of all honeybees. They are the benchmark in comparing against other honeybees. They also are very easy to find replacement queens should a queen fail or not exceed your expectations. Let's take a look at the traits of the Italian honeybee and we will start with a queen. The queen as you can see here, has a very golden brown abdomen. And sometimes it will have a hint of black or dark brown on the very tip of the abdomen. And how I usually find a, an Italian queen very quickly is I hold the frame in front of me and the sun is at my back and shining straight down. And you should be able to find that the, the abdomen of the queen lights up like a Christmas tree and you'll be able to find her very, very quickly. So that's the traits on the queen there. Let's go to the worker bee. The worker bee has anywhere from four to five stripes, and typically those are black, and the rest is a golden brown. Now, let's take a look at why these Italians are so popular. They're the most gentle of all honeybees. They're easy to work with, and as you're inspecting a hive, and you accidentally drop a frame of bees, they're not gonna fly all up in your face on average. They produce the average honey collection and are the benchmark also for other honeybees. Now, the thing that we have to be very, very careful on is their fast buildup of the queens. In the early spring, when the maple pollen starts coming into the hive, we have to be very careful as beekeepers because that's when the, the queen gets the turbo boost on and is producing a lot of brood. That can be very, very um, troublesome to a new beekeeper by not adding an additional super to the hive. And thus they do not have the room to grow within that hive. Now, if that happens, they're going to swarm. And swarming means you've lost pretty much your honey production for that season on that given hive. So you have to be super, super careful on that side. But the, the quick buildup is a very much a positive because that gets them into the mindset of collecting nectar in, in the months to come. More bees, more nectar, more honey. Okay, let's talk about the negative traits. Italian bees are reluctant to fly on overcast days. And this means there is limited honey production and other types of bees have a higher honey production because they will fly on those overcast days. 
Another aspect that you have to consider too is the Italian honeybees are not as defensive in guarding the hive entrance. So when you see drift happening from another hive and they're going in to inspect that hive, that means that there's going to be robbing. And robbing is simply one colony robbing the other of their stores. That can be pollen, it could be nectar, it could also be honey. So th that's all part of the robbing process that can and will happen if you have a weak defense on your guard bees. Ray, what a great primer on an Italian honeybees. Mm. I learned quite a bit there. As the novice, the new guy, are you going to start me off with some Italians for my uh, first uh, hive? Yes, you get the Italians to break you in. I liked it when you said that they're sort of uh, docile may not have been the right word, but maybe they don't get as, as angry as other bees can. You tend to make a lot of people angry. I, I, I've noticed that over the years, <laughs> so starting me with the Italians is going to be great. Um, Hey, welcome to Ask Ray. This is our very first time to, to do this segment yes. uh, because it's our first broadcast of, of Buzz TV. And we're going down to the I-4 corridor there in Orlando. Uh, yes. Still thinking about you guys with, with Hurricane Ian coming through. And uh, this question's from Stan H. And he's got a question that I've actually been wondering. When is the best time to order bees? Well, it's not one time fits everybody. So let's start with, with where Stan is in Orlando. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. All right. So if we looked at the Gulf Coast from Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and Florida, those are going to be our Gulf Coast states. And most of the time, all the bees will need to be shipped and received in the month of March. So Stan would get his in March. But that is not going to be the same for somebody that is in, say, Chicago. Uh, they're still in the cold throes of winter, mm -hmm. and they're going to get their bees in early May. The same with somebody in the New England states. Um, it would be the same, same May dates that they would want to get theirs. Now, it gets a little bit more trickier for, say, somebody in Kentucky. Somebody in Kentucky it would be more like the, the middle of April that they would want to get their bees. So it's based on topography. For example, if somebody is at the beach in Virginia, okay, they're not going to get their bees the same time as somebody in the Shenandoah Valley. Right, big elevation difference yes, between those or two. Or even on top of the Shenandoahs. Um, so there, there's like four climatic zones that are right there in Virginia itself. Now, so, is this information easily accessible or is the best thing to do to, say, call our sponsor, Mountain Sweet Honey, say, here's where I live, what do you recommend, how should someone proceed? Yes, they, they can call our call center, 706-886-1322, and one of our customer service representatives will assist you in getting the right ship and receive date based on where you live. And if you can't remember that phone number, we've got the link for Mountain Sweet Honey right there yes. in the description on the YouTube and Facebook. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you go to the Mountain Sweet Honey page, you can find the contact information right there. Absolutely. All right. Well, good. Uh, thanks, Stan, for helping us with that question. Our next one comes from Laura. She's in Big D. How about them cowboys? Dallas. Yeah. Com uh, coming to us from there. Her question is, and, and this again is a question a lot of us have, how many bees come in a package? And then I would add to that, how big is a package physically? Okay. A package of bees comes, uh, our package of bees is three pounds. And what that means is if you take that, that package of bees, which is roughly 16 inches long by nine inches high by six inches wide, and it has screen on both sides, and you dropped it on this table from three inches up, all the bees are going to fall to the bottom. For every inch equals a pound. Now, we only sell three-pound packages, and here's the reason why. If I sold somebody two pounds of bees, we cannot go through and do a census on if this bee is 40 days old hmm. and in five days it will die because the average bee life is 45 days. I did not know that. So it, it, that's a pretty universal. Yes. Uh, thus the, yes. the average is 45 days. Okay. All right. So 
With that said, there are some that sell the two pound or a four pound or a five pound. The problem with getting a four pound or a five pound package is there's not enough syrup coming out of the can to feed mm. that many bees. So they dehydrate and die. So somebody, let's just say they get four pounds of bees in three days, they're going to lose about a pound and a half of bees. And that that's far less than the three pounds that we're mm -hmm. sending out. Three pounds tends to be the perfect mix of population versus syrup drop out of the syrup can. Very good. Well, thank you, Laura. Now, this next question, Ray, have you ever heard of a place called Soddy Daisy, Tennessee? Man, I'm going to tell you what. We have done business in Soddy Daisy for the full 10 years that we have been in business. Can I put you on the spot? Where is Soddy Daisy? Can you tell in me? In the mountain east? region. In the mountain in the, region. All right, we're going to stick with that. Hello to everybody in Soddy right. Daisy. <laughs> oh, you almost got me, Bernie. <laughs> okay. Uh, what, what's the question? So her, her question from, from Saudi Daisy, and uh, actually it's not a her, it's from John. Okay. His question is about the Beekeepers Boot Camp. Uh, we recently, down in our home yes. location, Tocoa, Georgia, had the Beekeepers Boot Camp, uh, and it was recorded, and he's wanting to know when is that available. Well, the Beekeeping Boot Camp has been very, very popular over the last five years. We've had People fly in from all over the United States to, to be in attendance to this boot camp. It's a day long uh, boot camp that we have. And the problem is, is not everybody can take off time from California or Wisconsin to come down and spend time with us at our boot camp. We've had as many as 300 uh, hmm. beekeepers here to attend. But this year we shaved it back so that we could videotape the, the boot camp. And what we did is we cut out a lot of the fluff that happens with breaks and stuff like that and got it down to about three and a half hours worth of really hands-on teaching um, and experiencing it as you did. We went out and... My first uh, beekeepers boot camp. And did a hive inspection. And you were right there all in it too. First time in the, uh, the beekeeping suit and I didn't mm -hmm. get stung. No so stings, I, no I've got a little momentum, uh, into yes. my journey. Yes. And we, we got that in about a three and a half hour video mm -hmm. and we, we sent it off to, to be edited. We got it back. We did the revision and we're expecting to get that back next week and get it up live, um, for pay-per-view for those that want to get it. Or those that attended, we're offering them a free access to that, cool. that video. That's, that's nice to do that uh, because we appreciated everybody mm -hmm. that came. Hey, our final questions from Elmira, New, uh, New York. This one's from Sarah. And I'm guessing by her question, she lives uh, in the woods and wants to know, can you have a hive in the woods? You know, Sarah, that's a, a great question. And the answer is yes, but you need to do some protectiveness of your hive. Because what happens is the, the trees offer a lot of shade and that shade creates moist, so, excuse me, moist soil. And um, that moist soil helps small hive beetles multiply by pupating in the, in the soil. So what I tell most beekeepers is first try to find the most sunniest spot that you can find on your property. Some people only have a half acre or others have a hundred acres and it's a lot more easier to find a sunny spot. We want to find sun. The optimum is 10 plus hours out of an average summer day. Now I understand that that's, that's not for everybody, but the more sun you get, the drier, the soil, hmm. the drier, the soil, the less small high beetles that you'll have. And th what happens is, is these, these small high beetles come out as like a little inchworm and crawl out the front of the hive into the ground and pupate. And that pupate, uh, fast forward ahead, equals a small hive beetle. They fly back into the hive, and that's when uh, they create a lot of damage within the hive. And also with having a hive in, in the woods, there's a lot more moisture that is going to be there because the sun isn't there to dry it out. And you want to definitely make sure that it's not on the ground, that it's elevated on a, on a hive stand. Cool. 
I think pupate is going to be my new favorite word. Mm. I, it's not a word I use every day. So I'm going to this week, in fact, everybody this week, find a way in conversation just to use the word pupate and see, <laughs> see the, the reaction that you get from people. Hey, do you want to ask Ray a question? It's super simple. Buzz TV mm. at mountainsweethoney.com. Yes. Buzz TV at mountainsweethoney.com. Get us your questions. Uh, they will be coming. Uh, we'll be answering those in future episodes. And then also continue to visit our social sites on YouTube and Facebook and mountainsweethoney.com because uh, we're starting a library of questions, yes. uh, of Ask Ray segments where people can then, you know, go and find the, the Ray's answer to their specific question. So hope that uh, you will send those, send those questions in right away. Hey, I just wanted to say, if you've made it this far into our first broadcast of Buzz TV, you're our hero. Thank you yeah. for hanging with us. Details on the flash sale. If you missed any of that, uh, maybe you're you know getting something out of the fridge when we advertised that earlier. We'll tell you about that in just a moment. But first, Ray, give us uh, a rundown on our next broadcast. Yes, that's in two weeks. We're going to go every Thursday at 7 p.m. And uh, look forward to seeing you all then. But ne our next broadcast in two weeks, we'll have Bobby Chasen with Georgia Bee Removal. You know, as beekeepers, we, we always get that phone call. Hey, I got bees in my house. What do I do? Well, my, my answer is call Bobby at Georgia Bee Removal. Uh, he's going to be in and he's going to show us what his extraction techniques are and talking about regulations here in the state of Georgia. Hmm. You know, Brian, I can never get away from it either. Just two weeks ago, I was up in Pennsylvania, Newtown, Pennsylvania, and my Uncle Pete came to me and he said, Ray, I got a neighbor next door that's got some bee issues. So he texted him and he said, come on over. So hmm. we went on over and it was a very unique, I might even show a video next week. Oh, you got I some shot. on your phone? Yeah, you were able yeah, to do yeah. some video? And uh, so it's always good to see how the professionals do it and because we might have to do it sometime ourselves. Mm. So Bobby will be here to do that. We're also going to be talking about the carniolan honeybee and some of the, the traits for the carniolan. You know, we've been selling carniolan bees for about seven years. And uh, once people have, have given it a whirl with, with carniolan bees, they really appreciate the bee itself. So we're going to take a look at that next week too, or excuse me, in two weeks. And of course, we'll have a new flash sale item there too. We also have on a, a future show coming after, after Bobby, Dr. Jamie Ellis from the mm. University of Florida. For those that don't know, there are over 70 professors that make up the entomology group at the University of Florida. And we're fortunate enough to have uh, Dr. Ellis with us on, on an interview for, for that broadcast. So we're really looking forward to that too. And, you know, Brian, just between me and you, we have a couple of celebrities that we're talking to about going out and doing a house call with. Them. Oh, nice. And so, um, that's all in the making right now. And that's where we show up with the camera crew and just yes. sort of walk through their entire process yeah. and make some possible suggestions or observations, yep. and then be able to show that on a future episode of Buzz TV. Yes, uh, okay. that too. And uh, but you don't have to be a celebrity for us to come and do a house call. No. Absolutely so as you not. mentioned earlier in the show, somebody could hit us up at that email address we've been giving out, Buzz TV at MountainSweetHoney.com. If they're in one of the surrounding states, we're in Georgia. So sorry we can't come to Wisconsin. The budget just doesn't allow <laughs> allow us to make that trip to Sheboygan. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you're somewhere in a surrounding state, we might just show up uh, knocking on your door. Well. If you Brian, invite us, my, my anticipation is, is that, um, if we're going to go to Texas, we're going to have a road stop in Louisiana. We're mm -hmm. going to have a road stop in Alabama, your old stomping grounds. Mm -hmm. And then also in Mississippi. So it might be four or five days of shooting that we'll have on, on the, on this oh. house call, uh, episodes that we're going to be doing. Boy, it's going to be a lot too. of fun. Yeah, it is. It's going to be a lot of neat people different personalities, different views, and we're going to talk about it, we're, it, it more in depth and, and see what the issues are on the local side. 
Well, as you can see up on the screen, it's time to revisit our flash sale. We've got the medium and deep foundation uh, from Pierco. Thank you, John, for being uh, such a great interview earlier in the program. And Ray, tell us about uh, what foundation is used for, and uh, we'll talk about how to save some money on it. All right. Well, folks, this is the special is for medium and deep foundation, 15% off. You'll need it any and every time that you go out to your bee yard. You got to have it. If you don't and wait on it, the bees are going to create comb in place of that frame. So get an extra box, use it throughout the year, have fun with it, where you're not begging your postman, do you have any uh, foundation for me today to be delivered? So do that and you'll be glad that you did. Again, use the code at checkout, Buzz TV, simple and easy to remember, Buzz TV, that will save you 15%. Now, if you're watching the replay of the live stream, it's good through November the 3rd, 2022. So if you're That's watching correct. this in 2023, 2024, too late. sorry, but you might still want to visit mountainsweethoney.com and see, you know, throw in Buzz TV after your purchase and see if it saves you some money. So again, uh, thank you to John at Pierco for being a guest. Thank you to Mountain Sweet Honey for sponsoring the program. And uh, thanks for you who stuck around to the very end of Buzz TV. Appreciate again, you guys. everybody. Thank you.